Example 5. Suppose that A and B are angles in standard position such that the cosine of A is equal to negative one-fifth and the cosine of B is equal to negative four-fifths and A and B are both in quadrant two. We're going to use this information to find each of the following. We scroll down, we need to find in part A the cosine of A plus B and then in part B, we need to get the cosine of A minus B. All right, so what are we going to do? Well, let's start on part A, okay? Um, we have all this information, and the first thing we're trying to calculate is the cosine of A plus B. So we know that we can apply the sum formula for cosine. So if you go back to page one, that's going to be formula number one. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down. Okay, so we know that the cosine of A plus B is equal to the cosine of A times the cosine of B minus the sine of A times the sine of B. Okay, so what you want to be able to do now is plug in values for this. Okay, so like what's the cosine of A? What's the cosine of B? What's the sine of A? What's the sine of B? Okay, so let's look at what we've been given. Okay, we know some things. Okay, like I know the cosine of A is negative one fifth. So I can go ahead and replace it with that information. Okay, the cosine of A is negative one fifth. And then I would have to multiply by the cosine of B. I know that too. Okay, I'm given that information. Okay, so the cosine of B is negative four fifths. Okay, so I'm going to pop that in. Okay, so let me color code this. Then I have to subtract the sine of A times the sine of B. Okay, so here's where we hit the roadblock because we don't know what the sine of A is and we don't know what the sine of B is. Okay, we're going to have to figure it out. Okay, so let's, we're, I'm going to draw this out. Okay, I'm a very visual learner like I told you. Okay, so I want to see what's going on. A and B are angles, and both of them are in quadrant two. Okay, so I'm going to start on angle A. I'm going to make a drawing for angle A, and I'm going to make another drawing for angle B because if I did everything in one drawing, it would be all congested. Okay, so here's my XY plane. Okay, and I am told that uh, A is an angle in quadrant two. Okay, so you know, we don't know what it measures. We don't have that information. So just imagine you have an angle in standard position because it says that your angle has to be in standard position. One side of the angle will coincide with the positive X axis. That's the initial side. And then we would rotate, okay, to the second quadrant. Okay, so the terminal side is gonna look something like this. Okay, again, we're just guessing because we don't know the measure of the angle itself, okay? So what we can do is make a right triangle out of this. Okay, so we've done this before. I am gonna get rid of this arrow here. Okay, and I'm gonna make a right triangle. Okay, so I would draw down from the terminal point down to the x-axis, draw straight down, okay, to make a right triangle. Okay, and so there's our right angle. Okay, and I know this was A, okay, uh, but we're going to use this as our reference angle for A in the triangle, okay, so it's going to look like this, okay. So you've got angle A drawn, it's in standard position, it's in quadrant two, and what do you know about it? You know the cosine of A. The cosine of A is negative one-fifth, okay, cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, Okay, so we can equate sides. Hypotenuse can never be negative. So the negative sign is going to have to go with the one. That's the adjacent side. And the hypotenuse is going to be five. Okay, so we need to label these guys. Okay, if this is angle A, the angle is always like the angle that you're drawing. It's always the angle inside of the triangle. It's between the terminal side and the X axis. Okay, so this is the correct angle A. Okay, if we go across from A, this is the opposite side. The side across from the right angle is the hypotenuse. The other side is the adjacent side. 
okay? The adjacent side needs to be negative one. The hypotenuse needs to be five. We need the measure of the opposite side, okay? So we're gonna have to use the Pythagorean theorem here. The Pythagorean theorem says C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. C is always re reserved for the hypotenuse. So we're gonna get five squared is equal to the adjacent side is negative one squared plus the opposite side squared. This is gonna give us that 25 is equal to one plus B squared. Move the one over, so B squared is 24, okay? Take the square root of both sides, okay? Um, so if we do this, we're gonna get that B is equal to plus or minus the square root of 24, okay? And we need to pick, the sign matters, okay? In quadrant two, okay, if you're looking at um, this opposite side, okay, um, the opposite side, is above the x-axis, so the y values are positive here, so we need to go with the positive version, okay? So we're gonna pick the positive one. If you want, you can also simplify your square root at this time. So 24 breaks down into four times six, four breaks down into two times two. If we use these numbers, the square root of 24 is the same thing as two times two times six. Here's a pair bring out the two, square root of 24 is the same thing as two square root of six, okay? So our opposite side is going to be the positive two times the square root of six, okay? All right, so what we can gather from all of this work is that the sine, we need the sine of A, okay? If you come back down here, we need the sine of A. The sine of A is gonna be the opposite over the hypotenuse, okay? And that is gonna be two square root of six over five, okay? So we can go ahead and pop that in, two square root of six over five, okay? And then we need one more thing, okay? That's gonna be, let me color code this. We need the sine of B, okay? So B is a totally different angle. That's why you can't use the information that we have already. Um, it's gonna be the same kind of thing. It's also in the same quadrant. If it were located in a different quadrant, you would just draw your triangle in a different quadrant, okay? So here we go, here's quadrant two. All right, we're gonna draw a right triangle. All right, so here we go, so something like this. All right, so similar kind of thing. This is now going to be angle B, okay? And here's the right angle, okay? So again, this is the opposite side. This is the hypotenuse. This is the adjacent side, okay? We are given the information that the cosine of B is equal to negative four fifths, okay? So we need to label this, okay? Again, um, just like we saw earlier, if the cosine of B is negative four fifths. We need to equate that to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse cannot be negative, so the hypotenuse is again gonna be five, and the adjacent side is gonna be negative four now. Okay, so we're gonna get the adjacent side is negative four, the hypotenuse is five. Okay, we need to use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for the opposite side. So C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. Okay, so C squared is gonna be five squared. That's gotta equal negative four squared plus B squared. We're gonna get 25 is equal to negative four squared, that's 16, plus B squared. Subtract the 16. We're gonna get that B squared is nine. Take the square root of both sides. Okay, put a plus or minus on the number. So B is plus or minus three. Okay, the square root of nine is three. Okay, you do need to pick positive or negative. Okay, we're in quadrant two. This opposite side that we're labeling, it's above the x-axis, so, so it should be a positive number. It should be three. Okay, so we're gonna say that B is three. And now that we have the length of the opposite side, we can compute the sine here. Okay, so the sine of B is going to be the opposite 
over the hypotenuse, okay? And so this is gonna be, uh, the opposite side is three, and the hypotenuse is five, okay? So we can come down here and plug in what the sine of B is. Okay, the sine of B is three-fifths. All right, so now we've got everything plugged in. We just need to simplify the number and we will be done, okay? We have a pair of fractions that we're multiplying and then we're subtracting the multiplication of another pair of fractions. So let's multiply and then we can subtract, okay? Multiply across the top and across the bottom. Negative times negative will turn positive. One times four is four. Five times five is 25. And then we're subtracting. Again, we're gonna multiply this pair of fractions. The bottom is gonna be five times five, so 25. And then multiply the top, okay? So two times three gives you six, and then we're multiplying that by the square root of six, okay? And now we're subtracting the two fractions. We already have the common denominator of 25. So keep that and then just subtract across the top, okay? So this is gonna be four minus, the six, four minus six times the square root of six. And this is our answer, okay? It's a funny looking answer, okay? But remember you have to give an exact answer, okay? This is what it is, okay? Unfortunately, there's no way of checking yourself because we don't know what A and B actually are, okay? All right, so that was part A. Let's move on to part B. It's gonna be very similar. This time, we've got the same setup, but instead of the cosine of A plus B, we're gonna do the cosine of A minus B. So all you have to do is change the formula you're using, okay? We're gonna use the difference formula for cosine, so formula number two. Okay, use that and plug into it and simplify and we're done. Okay, so I'm gonna write out my formula. Okay, so the cosine of A minus B is gonna be the cosine of A times the cosine of B plus the sine of A times the sine of B. So we just plug in, okay? First thing I need is the cosine of A. The cosine of A up here in yellow, it's negative one fifth. Okay, then I need to multiply that by the cosine of B, okay? The cosine of B, that's up here, it was given, negative four-fifths, okay? So plug that in. This time I have a plus sign in the middle, okay? So that's basically the big difference here, okay? I've gotta multiply that by the sine of A, okay? Where is the sine of A? I calculated it over here, okay? The sine of A, we said was two square root of six over five. Okay, so plug that in. Two square root of six over five. Multiply that by the sine of B. Okay, so come back up here. That's what I have highlighted in purple. The sine of B is three fifths. And now we'll simplify. Okay, so multiply each pair of fractions and then subtract. Okay, so negative one-fifth times negative four-fifths, we said that's four over 25. This time we're adding, okay, when we multiply the other pair of fractions, multiply across the bottom to get 25. Two times three is six times the square root of six. Okay, add the fractions. We already have a common denominator of 25. Keep it, add across the top, okay? So the cosine of A minus B is gonna be four plus six square root of six. Okay, we're done.